bar is a subset of b bar, and, and we're trying to prove that b bar is a subset of a bar. And if we can prove both of those, this one and this one, then putting them together, the only way these two can be, compa be compatible is that uh, these two sets are equal. Right? So that's, that's the strategy, that's what we're trying to do. So we're trying to show that um, uh, A bar is a subset of B bar. Now how do you do that? How do you show that something's a subset of something else? Well, what's the definition of a subset? It means some element, well for every, for every element of this, uh, if, it, if it's an element of that, therefore it's an element of this. So if we can show that, uh, we, we have proven that this is a subset of that. That's, that's a definition of a subset. Okay. Uh, go, go way back to one of the very first lectures on uh, uh, the definition of a subset. Okay, so let, let X, yeah, X just some element it belongs to A bar, it, it, the um, equivalence uh, class of element A. Right? So if that's true, then X tilde A, yeah, that's, um, you know, if X is a member of this, it has, it has to have uh, this equivalence relation with a little a, right? But okay, so so if that's true, right? If that's true, we get this. But we also have a tilde b, right? Because why? 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 Because that's the left-hand side. So we, we're now we're now doing the only if part. So we're going from left-hand side to right-hand side. So so we're given this. We know this. So so we have x tilde a. But we also have a tilde b. Ah, now look, if x tilde a and a tilde b, we can use the transitive property. Right? So we can use that uh, third part using the transitive rule. So if x tilde a and a tilde b, therefore x tilde b, the transitive rule. Okay? So we have x tilde b. And that means... Uh, that x belongs to a bar, right? If that's true, that this, that means this x uh, is one of the elements in the equivalence class of little b. Okay, so from this, uh, you know that x must belong to b to b bar, right? So if x if x belongs to a bar, therefore x belongs to b bar for any x, right? Well, that's the definition of a subset. So, um, so if x belongs to a bar, that implies x belongs to b bar, and that implies that a bar is a subset of b bar. Right? It's the definition of, of a subset. Okay, so we've now shown that uh, the equivalent class of a is a subset of the equivalence class of b. Okay, so uh, put a put a rectangle around that because that's uh, a result we'll come back to in a, in a while. Now, all right, now we sort of do something much the same, but uh, we, we're trying to prove the next step is that B bar is a subset of A bar. All right. Uh, let so if if X just any any element, it's if X is a a member, well not any element, but if, if X is a member of B bar, right? Then uh, by definition. Uh, x tilde b, you know, this, this uh, equivalence relation between x and b. X, x is a member of your equivalence class. So, so if you've got that, you've got this. All right? But, but we have a tilde b. There's an equivalence relation between a and b. Where'd that come from? Well, here. Right? We're still, we're still uh, going from left to right. We're doing the only if part. So, so we know this, that a tilde b. Right? Now, if A tilde B, now this, this is an equivalence relation, right? So uh, we have the symmetric, the symmetric property. So if A tilde B, therefore B tilde A. Right? So we can use the, this second property because uh, it's, a, it's an equivalence relation. Okay. Um, yeah, so if A tilde B, therefore B tilde A, using, using the symmetric rule, you know, using, using, using this one, right? Okay, uh, so if X tilde B, 
and B tilde A, we can use the transitive rule, this third one. So X, X tilde B and B tilde A, therefore X tilde A. Right? This is uh, uh, there's an equivalence relation between X and A. Okay, so X, X tilde A using the transitive rule. Now if that's true, X is a member of the equivalence class, little a. So X belongs to this, this set, right? the, the set of all elements that are equivalent to little a. Okay? So that means if X belongs to B bar, then X belongs to A bar. Right? X belongs to B bar, then X belongs to A bar. Right? Now that's the definition of a subset. Therefore, A bar is a subset of B bar. Okay, here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> if X belongs to B bar, then X belongs to A bar. And therefore, B bar belongs to A bar. Right? Now, uh, we've got this one from here. So, so I went from, directly from here to here. So, so now we've got this one from here. And we've got this one. So here and here, same. Okay, so we, we have these, this result and this result, and they're both valid. Now the only way uh, these two can be compatible is if A bar equals B bar. Right? So uh, we've proved that two sets are equal, and that's, that's, that's the result. You start with this, you know, left-hand side, and prove it right-hand side, because it's the only if part. Right? So we've proved these two sets are equal. Okay? So that's, that's theorem 50, 55 done. Okay, now um, uh, a, new, a new topic. Now, <laughs> I, I just put it in to uh, fill up the board. Um, now, there will be theorems following this. So this is a, just a kind of lead-in for a, a new concept. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll do the theorems following, uh, based on this idea, this, this new concept, uh, in the next session. So, uh, what, is this, what is this concept? Well, uh, it's called a, a partition. Now, a partition is a noun and a verb. Uh, you can talk about a partition of something, so a, part a partition of a set, right? And you can talk about... Uh, if we partition the set, that's a verb, right? So uh, it, it, uh, it, that word is used both as a verb and a noun, so you'd be, be conscious of that, all right? So if you use it as a noun, what is, what is a partition? Uh, well, you, you, a, a partition of a set, okay, so uh, big A, okay, it, it's a kind of division, uh, of that set into subsets. It's, it's like it's like cutting cutting the set into portions or subsets, but in such a way that uh, your subsets are disjoint. Right? The, the, these subsets they have no elements in common. Right? They are disjoint. That's what disjoint means. Has no element in common. Uh, but that's not enough. Um, you you then uh, when you bring these subsets together, these disjoint subsets together, all of them, the, the union of all these subsets is equal to the original set, uh, which is, uh, well, I make a kind of an analogy, this sort of way you can rem remember it. I, I've mentioned this before, but um, if, to, to sort of visualize it, uh, to have a kind of visual memory of what a par partitioning is, uh, take 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 your set here as a as a Venn diagram. Okay, so just imagine it's a, a kind of oval shaped. That's your, that's your set A, and then slice slice the oval. Maybe you know make some cuts through it. So like here's here's an example with two cuts, right, of your set A, and so you'll have three subsets. Uh, well, depending how you cut, right? You you, you could have uh, what four? Yeah, you could have four, dep depending how you slice it. Um, but let's say you slice it this way, and you get three subsets, right? A one, A two, A three. These are all subsets of A. 
So uh, you have now partitioned, like cut, uh, divided, uh, this set A into subsets. And when you put all, all the subsets together, you get the original A. And putting together means just union, you're doing the union, the union of these, these three. So, um, so little n here, for this case, would be three. You've got three subsets, right? So if you union the three sets, you know, A1, A2, A3, A1, A2, A3, you'll get the set, right? Now, uh, a way to visualize that is um, this Venn diagram. Imagine that then as like a large watermelon. Okay. And then, you, then I then I take my samurai, my samurai sword, and I I slice it. I slice that watermelon into portions, into uh, well, a subset of, of uh, the watermelon. But if I put those portions together, the subsets together, I get I, I get the whole watermelon. Okay. So so in a sense, you can look on um, uh, partitioning as as like slicing. You know, Right? And uh, the, when you put the subsets together, you, you get the whole, you know, the whole set. And any, any element that belongs to the set A, that element will, you know, after the slicing, after the, the dividing, the partitioning, okay, that element will belong to one and only one of the subsets. Right? So, uh, yeah, so for any element belonging to your set A, this element will belong to one and only one of the subsets. Okay? And that's partitioning. So, uh, so the size, if you, if you add up uh, the size of each subset, uh, you know, for, for given, given the number of subsets, like here, in this example, that there are three subsets, okay? So you're, you're summing over three. So the size of each subset, add them all up, you will get equal to the size of the whole set A. <coughs> right? so, so partitioning <coughs> is, is a kind of slicing, dividing up the set into disjoint subsets, such that when you union all those subsets, you get, you get back to your original set. Okay? And, and such that each element, uh, each element in your set here, belongs to one and only one subset. Right? That's uh, so. A, a partition of a set is just slicing it into subsets. Right? Uh, it's 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 creating or dividing, creating subsets of a set. And the subsets, uh, when brought together. Uh, union, union, they create the whole set, right? There, in other words, there's no, there's no element left out, right? Uh, each each element has to belong to one of those, uh, one of those subsets, and only one, right? That that's important, All right? Uh, so I'll uh, I'll stop there for this session, and the next session uh, we'll prove some theorems about this and uh, introduce a few more concepts. Okay, so till next time.